So homework question um, 39. And again, be careful, um, your numbers might be different um, because those are variables. So I've got 55 grams of water at 99.9 .9 degrees Celsius. I add 23 grams of zinc metal to that. And the zinc is at 22 degrees Celsius. Um, the water temperature drops, right, from 99.9 .9 to 96 degrees Celsius. What's the specific heat capacity of the zinc metal measured in this experiment? So yeah, we're gonna do the same two calculations, Q equals MC delta T, right? So Q equals MC delta T. We're gonna do it for the water first, and then we'll do it for the zinc next. So Q for the water, right? I've got 55 grams of water. The specific heat of water, 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius times my temperature change of water, right? The water goes down um, 3.9 degrees, I guess. So the Q of the water, Multiply that through 55 times 4.184 times the 3.9, and I get a negative um, 897.468 joules that the water releases. So the, the key is that the Q of the zinc, right? Water releases that energy, zinc absorbs that energy, so it's going to be a positive. 897.468 joules for the zinc. So now we're gonna go down here and do the same calculation for zinc, except for now in the Q equals MC delta T. Now I know Q, I know the mass of zinc, I know the temperature change of zinc, the specific heat of zinc is my unknown. So the Q for zinc, it absorbs 897.468 joules. The mass of zinc is 23 grams. The specific heat, I don't know. And then for the delta T, right, the, the zinc starts at 22 degrees. Yeah, 22 degrees, and it goes to 96 um, degrees Celsius. So 74 degree temperature change for the zinc. So the specific heat of zinc, let's see, divide that by 23 times 74. And this is three significant figures because um, I've done this question already two or three times this week. So um, when I divide those across, I get 0.527 joules per gram times degrees Celsius. That makes sense. And I also like, I, I get why you like um, switch like the water to zinc and like did negative to positive, but just like conceptually, like why do you do that? Because, and this is the, one of the challenges with uh, calorimetry is the water starts at 99 degrees and the water goes down to 96 degrees. So the water loses energy. So it's a negative Q where was the water losing that energy to, right? There's only two things in the system, the water uh, and the, the zinc. zinc. is absorbing the water, or, or absorbing like the energy from the water. Okay. Exactly, yeah. So think of it as like you have warm water and you put ice cubes in it and then the ice cubes melt, right? Your water ends up nice and cold because the ice absorbed that energy um, from the water. So your water cooled down. Okay, um, thank you. And so, yeah, for the water, the water's losing it, it's negative. The zinc is going up in energy, it's absorbing it, so it's a positive. And yeah, that's one of the tricks with calorimetry is that we, we're not able to measure the zinc. We're not able to measure the reaction. We can measure though what's happening to the water and then we have to remember that, okay, because the water is releasing energy, the reaction or the zinc in this case is absorbing that energy. It's the opposite sign. 
Where did you get the 4.184 joules over grams? That is the specific heat capacity or the specific heat of water. In the other question, they gave us 4.18, but it's 4.184. I mean, I, I just use the 4.184. So yeah, I would, you know, I would, if this was, because this is homework and you can look up the heat capacities, if this was an exam, I would, I would probably just give you in the question. And they do that in some of the questions, they do give you the specific heat of water. Um, but yeah, if it was an exam, I would just give you in the question, you know, blah, 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 given the, heat capacity, the specific heat of water is um, 4.184.